Hey there, Gavin Gay here from UltimateReloader.com. This is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. This is the kickoff of the Ultimate Reloader defense content. And with me, I've got a very well-qualified person, Guy Miner of GMM Defense. Thank you, Guy, for joining me. Glad to be here. Glad to be here, Gavin. So we're going to do a lot of really awesome content together, everything from concealed carry to home defense. We're going to be talking about handguns and rifles and shotguns just about everything and we would love to hear about what you guys want to see so make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment so guy let's talk about your background a little bit sure so you were in the marines correct i was yeah uh started out as uh, infantry um did plenty of that stuff and then moved over into the intel field uh probably the most significant work i did was with 15th mew 15th mew sock back in those days um taught me a lot taught me an awful lot. I got to have a lot of fun there. So that's your kind of foundation and all this tactical stuff, right? Yes. And then you made a transition to law enforcement. I did. Uh, about uh, 10 years into marriage, uh, my wife and I realized that I'd been gone almost six years and we had two little boys and it was time to come home every night. I'd done some work with law enforcement while I was in the Marines. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly enjoyed it and transitioned to, uh, to that. So you were a cop, but you had kind of a special role as well, right? With SWAT and sniping. Tell us, tell us about that. Right. Uh, I'd been there about a year when uh, the department handed me the department sniper rifle and said, you're now our SWAT <laughs> sniper. And I said, excellent. So I did that for 12 years, was on the SWAT team for 12 years. I was detective for a few years. Uh, I ran a um, gang and street level drug suppression unit for five years. Um, yeah, it was a good career. Well, I know that a lot of people around here know about you and have learned from you. That brings us to the last part of your career, if you will, which is GMM Defense, right? Tell us about GMM De Defense a little bit. Well, for 17 years, I've been a law enforcement firearms instructor. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking towards uh, retirement, thinking, what was I going to do? And I hated the idea of giving up the range, giving up all that range time. Mm -hmm. So I opened a little company. I became an NRA certified instructor and I opened up a little company to teach people how to be safe and accurate with their firearms and then start moving up a little bit and offering some more higher level, more intense courses as well. You can check that out on gmmdefense.com. And I just want to say again, I know I've told you this many times, but I really appreciate you coming here on the channel because I'm not qualified to teach this stuff. And I really feel like it's an important thing to bring to you all and for me as well to get more training. You know, I've had my concealed pistol license for years now. I have not had an adequate level of training. So I decided to stop being a hypocrite, get trained, and in the process, bring that content to you all. So that brings us to this video. We're gonna kick it all off with some home defense content. The content we're gonna talk about is gonna be all about having the right mindset, having the right gear, and knowing the right tactics and training, and having everything be muscle memory. So we're gonna talk about gear a little bit in this video, and specifically the revolver versus the semi-auto for home defense. Both good options, pros and cons on each. Let's start with what are we looking for for a, a handgun in the home? Some interesting things about a handgun for home defense is it doesn't have to be an itty bitty tiny little concealed carry gun. Mm -hmm. It can be a bigger gun. It's going to be somewhere in your home that you want to have access to it. So a bigger gun, a nice full size revolver or full size semi-automatic is fine. They work great in that role. We want to take a look at the ammo selection. We don't want over penetration. Most people live in an urban area, mm -hmm. and if I've loaded a uh, 230 grain full metal jacket hardball in there, I'm going through my walls, probably my neighbor's walls. Mm -hmm. So that's a bad thing. So we want something a little more frangible, a little easier to deal with there. We need a handgun that has extreme reliability, which can be found in either platform. Yep. We need one with easy accuracy, good handling qualities, something that's easy to pick up on, easy to move, easy to reload. We need those things. Yep. It would be good to have a high capacity type thing like your Glock. Mm -hmm. That's uh, excellent for that because it carries mm -hmm. a lot of ammo. Great gun for home defense. Absolutely terrific. And then other choices are just fine too. Uh, you just have to know how to reload them. And I think we were talking about it's it's not just a revolver or a semi-auto, it's a system, right? Right. The firearm itself, the ammunition, and the accessories. So let's talk about the semi-auto. Let's talk about the pros and cons. Let's use the Glock as an example. Sure. Sure, and your Glock is a very popular. Semi-autos in general are very popular with today's shooters. Mm -hmm. uh, they've 
replaced revolvers with an awful lot of people's minds. However, it's got some really good advantages. It's got a high capacity magazine, which is mm -hmm. terrific. Uh, fast reloads, it is so easy to grab that second magazine and put in there, although if you need more than 17, that's unusual. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's yes. uh, um, a lot of them come with some way of attaching either a flashlight or a laser, something on there that makes it a little bit better for yep. low light or self defense type stuff. So, uh, that might give you the tactical advantage, right? If, if absolutely. the perpetrator, the invader, doesn't have any kind of a light and you do, you could kind of shine it right in their eyes. Absolutely. And, yeah, you're in control at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your light can be part of your weapons. Yep. It is part of your weapon system. I do like <laughs> the fact that you can attach accessories. Uh, you, you do have some options for revolvers with that, like the Smith & Wesson TRR-8 right. has a rail, you can put a pick rail on the top, and so you can have some of the same options, but in general, it's, it's not gonna be there. Yeah, and your baseline Glock comes with that ability. Mm -hmm. So you can already just clamp it right on, your little flashlight down there on the bottom, good to go. You can replace, the standard sights are good, you can replace them with uh, fancy tritium sights if you want. Yep. Yeah, it's a, the Glock is a really good example of today's semi-auto, and it's an excellent home defense Okay, type so you were talking about the reloads. Why don't we go through a, a reload type of a scenario? Uh, and then later we'll do the same with the revolver. Okay. So, there are a slide lock back. We've done our shooting. It's time to reload. Out it goes. In goes the new one. And we're good to go. Nice. That's fast. That yeah. is really fast. Very fluid. You can train to do that extremely quickly. Mm -hmm. I like that about a semi-auto. It's very, very fast to reload. Yep. Lots of, lots of good advantages there. Let's talk about disadvantages. Disadvantages of a semi, some of them will not shoot if the magazine's gone, True. if you've dropped the magazine. That can be an advantage or disadvantage on depending on the situation and how you've trained to it. Um, that can be one. If it is ever so slightly out of battery, if for instance you bump into something and this slide comes back an eighth of an inch, mm -hmm. the gun will not fire. And a lot of people don't know that about their semis, but that is absolutely true. It goes slightly out of battery, the non-shooter. And we're not talking about shooting here. We're not talking about shooting at the range. We're talking about fighting, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. This is fighting. It's very violent, fast, usually short range, usually mm -hmm. low light. Um, and you may wind up literally this close in yep. your gunfight. Push, pushed into someone, yes. the slide goes back, yes. and you're And then it won't work. Yep. yep. And if that person is physically larger and stronger, that would That'd be definitely bad. put you at a, at a real disadvantage. That would that be point. bad. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I think one disadvantage is just the user interface. It's more complicated. It is. Uh, it takes more training. This is what mm -hmm. I've found. I've been for years and years been teaching people how to use firearms. And the revolver tends to be a little simpler. The semi-auto tends to take longer. People sometimes, especially new shooters, have a tough time loading the magazine itself mm -hmm. and then getting that magazine up in the magwell. Uh, working the slide is very difficult for some people. Manipulating the safeties, safeties, decockers. It seems like some of the guns have got this whole yep. row of levers a sink, down the for side. For instance, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You In might those, not know which is which. I don't. I, I don't have a sig. <laughs> right. Neither do I. <laughs> I was a marine. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious about them, especially with what's going on with the military and all that. And oh different yeah. Contracts and stuff like that. So. Yeah. If you guys like SIGs, nothing against that. <laughs> no, it's, it's really good. There's just a lot to look at there. It's like, wow, there's a lot yep. of controls on that thing. But like anything else, so it it uh, does potentially have a more complicated user interface, but if everyone in the household is aligned with how the gun is kept, and if it's something that's very simple like a Glock, and you know it's ready to roll, you get it out of the gun safe or out of the holster, whatever it is, you know, it's, it's gonna be pretty straightforward to use nonetheless. It's really about being familiar. This goes into your training, not just your training, mm -hmm. but training for maybe your spouse, maybe your adult kids, uh, whoever's around. If, if it's appropriate for them to learn how to use that gun, they need to learn how to use that gun. Yep. Um, Anyone that has access to the gun needs to be properly trained. Be very proficient with it. Yep. Safe, accurate, be able to shoot mm -hmm. it well. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good summary of the sort of pros and cons of the semi-auto. Let's move on to the revolver. <laughs> revolver, favorite of other generations. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. But still a great, great choice. Uh, there is, to, to me, there's nothing that feels better than a nice revolver. Uh, and, and it is very rugged, very simple to use. Uh, it can be very powerful. Um, 
It's, it's a good all-round piece of gear, and it doesn't have to be slow to reload. Mm -hmm. That's one of its disadvantages, is it's a little slower to reload, but not too bad. All you have to do is learn your little revolver, reload, Speed loaders. Yep. and you're good to go. Yeah, that's very quick. Almost as fast as going through and loading your semi-auto. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, in your experience in law enforcement, what would be the typical number of shots fired in an engagement in a home? Not very many. Yeah, <laughs> not very many. It's usually over pretty fast. Um, yep. Typically, Mr. Bad Guy leaves if somebody starts shooting at him. Yep. Um, but the spent shell casings can be a little bit sticky to extract. They gotta, can be. You gotta tap those gotta out. Gotta hit that out. So yep. They don't slide out just like this. These right. little dummy cartridges <laughs> slide out nice and easy. Yep. But so capacity is lower, and there's going to be a bit more time potentially to reload. And I'd, I'd say you, you have to definitely train for that as well to, to be yes. proficient. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the. You're going to fumble with it probably the yep. first time or two that you attempt to reload with a speed loader. But after that, it gets smoother and smoother. Mm -hmm. It's just another training thing. You got to go out there and train, train, train. Mm -hmm. What I do like about the revolver is the simplicity of the user interface. So I'm going to check. It's, it's unloaded. You can pick it up and then fire it, right? You don't even really have to think about it. And again, if you have a Glock stored in a, in a chambered can, you know, state, it's pretty much the same thing. Very similar, but, uh, but again, I, I love that uh, rugged reliability. Now on the downsides, we talked about the, the slide going back an eighth of an inch, right? right. And not being able to fire the, the, the Glock. So I can fire it. And then if I'm back just a little bit, it won't work. It's it's not going to actually fire. With the revolver, let's talk about that. Let's say we're in an up close and personal situation. Very, say you're up close, okay, and you need to shoot the bad guy again. All right, you need to do that. Mm -hmm. Bad guy gets a hold of this gun. You can pull as hard as you want on that trigger. It is not going to work. He has frozen things up by getting a hold mm -hmm. of that cylinder. So that's a disadvantage to the revolver. Now the bad guy would have to be trained to know to do that. Or lucky. Or lucky. He just tr maybe he's yep. just trying to grab your gun away from True. you. And, yep. and he's clamped down on it, and now he realizes, oh, hey, mm -hmm. this guy can't shoot me. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, that's in his favor. Yep. Now, unless you've already pulled the hammer back. Then True. you got one shot, right? True. Then you've got one. <laughs> but it is a 357 Magnum. And so. you're probably not going to be cocking that hammer back in a home defense situation. I wouldn't I would think so. <laughs> I, I would be attempting to shoot double action. Yes. Yeah, not, not single action yep. on that. So this is a disadvantage. An advantage is being able to shove the gun actually into the body, mm -hmm. of right up against the body, skin contact with the revolver, and trigger off that round. Yeah. Very devastating. Very And you, devastating. Know, you could be rolling around on the floor together, wrestling, and Absolutely. all sorts of stuff. You never know what's going to happen. Most gunfights don't happen at a distance. So let's talk about general reliability then. You know, we, you had talked about a couple things to me personally about a revolver that can go wrong, one of which is... Uh, the bullet uh, working its way forward under recoil. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that happens. Mm -hmm. um, I found that out, and it happens a lot of times with uh, hand loads. I was doing mm -hmm. my own hand loads, not putting enough crimp on my 44. Bullets crept forward and actually far enough forward to lock up my cylinder, and I had to figure that one out. Yep. And so we'll we'll take the whole hand loads for defense and carry as a separate that's conversation. That's a different conversation, someday, uh, But that taught me they'll do that. What's nice though is if you get a light strike or whatever. You know, you pull it once, and then uh, you just pull it again. Exactly. Like semi-auto. Exactly. Yeah, that's a semi-auto. You've usually got to go through something like tap, rack, bang, mm -hmm. and on the revolver, you simply pull the trigger again, mm -hmm. which is dirt simple, and it works. Let's talk about a little bit of the reliability and function issues that you can run into with a semi-auto. Then, semi-auto, you can get some uh, get some things such as. Ammo that's not powerful enough to run the gun. Mm -hmm. I've seen that happen. A lot of guys like to tinker with their 1911s and put those big 22 pound springs in them and mm -hmm. stuff. And then if they put some maybe some lighter loads in there, it just doesn't work as well. You know, it, it doesn't function properly. That's one problem you've got. If you don't maintain it real well, of course that goes with both guns. But yep. If you don't maintain it real well, it's not going to work well. It's got to be cleaned and lubed. Um, quality magazines and any yes. kind of a semi-auto you want good quality magazines the factory Glock magazines are good the good magazines that come with your your upscale 1911s are good but there's some magazines out there that's just not worth having yep and then there's also spring fatigue right if you have Absolutely. that 1911 that's been in grandpa's gun safe for 40 years and hasn't been pulled out and used you could 
have a weak spring or it or may like it that. may or may not work. Yep. 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 So obviously you need to be running the gun that you're going to use for defense, regardless of concealed carry or home defense. Make sure that you run a bunch of the ammo through the gun that you yes. intend to keep it loaded with. Yeah. Make sure that stuff works in your gun. Yep. Uh, so it makes the gun cycle, makes it work. That's the thing about any kind of a self-defense handgun. It's not just the power, it's not just the accuracy, it's the reliability. You're counting your life and the life of your loved ones mm -hmm. on one of these guns, and it's got to be reliable, as close to 100% as you can make it. Simple, clean, reliable, got to go. Every time pull that trigger, it has to go bang. And something is better than nothing. Having a gun that is readily available is is critical if you want to be able to defend your household, right. right? And so, you know, if you feel compelled, do it. Get the training, get get the firearm, put the ammo through it, and make sure that you're prepared. Absolutely, yeah. Be prepared, not paranoid. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> uh, but be prepared because someday you may have to defend yourself. Someday mm -hmm. you may have that occasion where you need to draw your weapon or you need to have your weapon with you. Mm -hmm. um, does it happen very often? No, thankfully. But can it happen? Sure. So be prepared. Yep. Absolutely. So that leads us to the question, what is it that you use? What do I and use? And I'll tell you guys what I use too. There we go. I use the thing that I've been shooting most for the past 40 more years is a 1911. Mm -hmm. and, and you have how many rounds through the one that you carried, the Kimber? The other one has <laughs> got about 85,000 rounds through it. Not so this one. I kind of think that would be a cool story uh, is to talk about the whole lineage of all of the repairs and upgrades and, sure. and, and you carrying it, you training people with it. That's pretty cool. So it's, you like it's the, been a great old gun. You like the 1911, and then what does your wife use? My wife does not go train all the time. Mm -hmm. She's not. She's. She, I'm at the range pretty much every week. Um, she's not. She's two, three times a year. She goes up to the range and shoots her Smith and Wesson 38 Chief Special. Nice. Very simple, reliable. Yep. Almost can't go wrong. So you guys covered the revolver and the semi-auto. We did. <laughs> yep. Here's what I use. So up here at the Ultimate Reloader Outpost, we've got the cabin over there. I keep my Smith & Wesson 629 4 inch ready to roll with 44 mag. And that's because this is what I hike with. I've got this holster that I made for the gun. I keep it in the holster. I keep it loaded at all times. And I know if I had a big situation unfold, there's a lot of cougar in the hills here. We've got black bear here, you know. Anything from a two-legged to a four-legged problem, you know, I know I can handle it. I've, I've dispatched a lot of rock chucks with this guy because it's what I had on hand. Dangerous are, rock chucks. They are pests to the nth degree <laughs> around here. Uh, I did just get the 329 PD, which is the Scandium Titanium Aluminum. Very lightweight. Yeah, and, and I think for all day, you know, hiking and also running around on the quad, you don't know what's going to unfold up here. Uh, that's just my all-rounder kind of mountain gun. I also do use the Glock 17 sure. sometimes, um, but then down at the house I have a uh, Kel-Tec 9mm single stack, the PF9, which I'm looking at maybe upgrading to something like the Shield, but that's my concealed carry weapon. I'll often drive around with it, and then it's also by the bed and it's ready to roll. So I kind of like the idea of both as well, and I carry a single stack nine because I like the thin profile and right. I like to be able to have the IWB option, especially in the summer. Mm -hmm. Yep, tuck it away nice <laughs> and simple. But that's that's concealed carry, which yep. is a whole nother episode. Oh yeah, uh, many episodes. Yes. Remember, we got the mindset, we got the gear, and we got the tactics. And yep. there's plenty to talk about with concealed carry with all those. So the big question is, what do you guys think is better for home defense? The revolver or the semi-auto? And what do you keep on hand to defend yourself and your home? We would like to know, so drop a comment. And if you want to know more about Guy Miner and his business, gmmdefense.com. If you're in central Washington or in Washington period, Pacific Northwest, give him a ring if you want to get training. Because, you know, I had friends on the west side that happened to take your training, your pepper spray training. Right. You know, you do active shooter training. You do all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff. So. I do. Guy's a good guy. You're going to be seeing him uh, here on the channel a lot more. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be talking about everything from sniping to shotguns to handguns to rifles. You know, we'll talk about the AR-15 for home defense. And oh, yes. Ranch defense, which is another scenario that I yes. take very seriously here. It's all good stuff. So make sure you've, you're subscribed to Gavin Tube. Make sure you've got the notifications turned on. And then a few things. 
I'm giving away something every week. That's another reason to subscribe. If you want to support me and Ultimate Reloader, you can buy one of these cool shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. You can support me on Patreon. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or a few thumbs up in the comments, you know, whatever Absolutely. it is. But share your, share your feedback. And uh, we're glad that you're here for part of the story. And thanks, Guy, for coming. And thanks for being a part of Ultimate Reloader. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Kay. Appreciate it. So until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.